And welcome to worship as we come together on this uh, February 7th. And now remember, today is our annual meeting. And as we are doing that for the first time on Zoom this year, uh, I will be here on campus uh, right after service. Uh, and we will begin, uh, if you are in need of either a device to get onto the Zoom, uh, or have your device and just want to come down and get a little help getting on to the call, uh, come on down. I'll be here uh, probably, well, I'll be here for worship and uh, after worship as well. So uh, come over if you are in need. And for the fellowship time tomorrow, uh, instead of using the fellowship Zoom number, just use the uh, annual meeting number uh, because I'll be starting that early so that we can get people to get on during that half hour before we actually begin the meeting. Uh, a couple of happy birthdays this week. We want to say happy birthday to Linda, Sabrina, Harley, and Shanta. And we also have our anniversaries this week, uh, Brent and Katie, and Stephen and Chantel. So we want to say happy anniversary to them this week. Uh, any other announcements? All right, I think we're good. Let us now join together by taking a moment of silence as we center ourselves and turn to God in confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace through the power and promise of Christ Jesus. Our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Opening song on the second to last Sunday in Epiphany, God, whose almighty word.
The grace of Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us join together in our prayer of the day. Everlasting God, you give strength to the weak and power to the faint. Make us agents of your healing and wholeness, that your good news may be made known to the ends of your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Continue with our song of praise. Good morning. The first reading this morning is from the book of Isaiah. The Judeans in exile have a good reason to be hopeful. The one who will bring them to freedom is the God who created the world, the God who subdues the rulers of the earth and gives strength to those who are weary. Chapter 40, verse 21. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth, when he blows upon them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youth will faint and be weary and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 147 verses 1 through 11 and 20. Let us pray this psalm responsively. Hallelujah! How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant it is to honor God with praise. The Lord, the Lord built, built Jerusalem. Jerusalem and gathers the exiles of Israel. The Lord heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. The Lord counts the number of the stars and calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to God's wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music upon the harp to our God who covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth, making grass to grow upon the mountains. God provides food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they cry. God is not impressed by the might of a horse, 
and has no pleasure in the seed of a wife, but finds pleasure in those who fear the Lord, in those who await God's steadfast love. Hallelujah. I got back to listen this morning. Hallelujah, here we go. According to Mark, the first chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. As soon as Jesus and the disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit them, the demons, to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, let us go on to the neighboring town so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came to do. And he went throughout Galilee proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We continue the sermon series started last week and kind of, well, continuing this week into a sense of more healing. Now, this week's question I would like to ask is, well, what does it mean to be healed? Looking at what it is said about the people that come to the house of Simon and Andrew, they were cured. They weren't healed. They were cured. And so their ailments were made better. Curing is something different than a sense of healing. Because many of you and many others that I know may have had a sense where you were healed even though all the symptoms or even the illness wasn't cured. Sometimes we learn to live with things because that sense of healing that comes into our lives is something greater, something more whole and encompassing than just curing an ailment. Thinking about casting out those demons as well, those people were in a sense not just cured, but they were healed because they got their lives back. Lives that were now forever changed by that experience, but their whole life was now in their own hands and not in the possession of those demons. It's an interesting 
well, it's an interesting thing that we walk in these days looking at this pandemic and COVID-19 where people are cured, but are people healed in these days? Curing the illness when they walk out finally from that perhaps months in the ICU, where they finally have that sense of being free from this virus. The work of healing has probably just begun because things hang on, continuing to, well, pull them down. They are cured of the disease, but healing will take time. And so in these days, we need to think about that and think about those long-term realities. Even when we're able to come back, we may feel that, well, the virus is taken care of, it is cured, or we're vaccinated against it so it cannot attack us. But the healing will go over time. Even as we come back together, we realize that, well, not everyone will be here in this place. Some will have moved away. Some will have fallen ill to this virus. Some may even have died because of this virus. Our community will be different. But we will, through God's power, be healed as a community and perhaps even given more life because of the excitement of being back together with one another once again. One of those interesting pieces in this text from the gospel is that phrase of Jesus going into Peter's mother-in-law and raising her up. It's not just pulling her out of bed. It's not picking her up. It's the same word in the Greek that Jesus was raised up at his resurrection. It is that lifting up to a whole new life. That is what we're truly needing in this time of more healing. We need that power of the resurrection to come into our lives and fill us. This month we celebrate Black History Month. We hear about those stories, well, some good and many not so good in our history together. And we know that in this month, as we learn more and more and walk with those of the Black History Month, we will understand more about our own lives and what it means to understand our own history. But we celebrate, too, that in this knowledge and celebration, we indeed come to new life. We change. We realize that our lives can and will be different. With more healing in our lives, we realize that we well, get better and better and better. We don't just sit back and say, I'm cured. I can relax now realize that we continue walking forward in these days. And so as you walk this day, as we gather later for our annual meeting, as we look forward into the rest of this month of Black History Month, as we come to the Transfiguration, as we enter into Ash Wednesday and the season of Lent, realize that our story and our history continues now and into the future. We walk this path, asking God to heal us more and more each day. Walking this path together, that we may indeed be given life together. So let us, with Peter and Andrew, with James and John, with Peter's mother-in-law, and all those who gathered at the door, let us come to Jesus in these days, opening our lives, opening our hearts and our spirits to Jesus in our lives. That God's spirit may come upon us, that we may feel that resurrection power, and that we may indeed receive that healing 
that we need in our lives. I invite you to open yourself this day as we pray. Gracious God, we pray for your healing in our lives, a healing that covers all of us, not just curing a disease, not just curing a virus, but healing our whole lives, that we may indeed live a new one. Bless us in these days. We may, may we feel your spirit moving upon us. May we feel that power of the resurrection of all things being new. And as we are able to gather once again, as we are able to come together, be with us as we walk this path of healing as a community gathered in you. Bless us this day. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our song of the day, On Eagle's Wings. Join together, confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the Church, the world, and all people in need. O Lord, answer the needs of loved ones and friends as we call out their names, either within our hearts or aloud. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God, for the church, for ministries of healing and wholeness, 
for hospital, hospice, and military chaplains, for those serving in prison ministry, for all who proclaim freedom and release in the name of Christ, let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. For creation, for insects in the grass, clouds on the mountaintops, for cattle and the rainwater they drink, for the humility to take our place among all creatures of the earth, let us pray. Have mercy, mercy O God. God. For the nations, for all who lead in cities and towns, states and countries, for community organizers, school officials, and CEOs, for international health organizations, that in times of trial, fear, or hopelessness, they find freedom in service to those in need, let us pray. Have mercy, mercy O God. God. For all wearied by life's burdens, for those who are poor, for those lacking supported relationships, for those crushed by death, for those struggling with chronic pain or other sickness, for those exhausted from overwork or stress, and for all who cry out to you, let us pray. Have, Have mercy, O God. God. For this congregation, for outreach and social ministries centered here, for parish nurses and visitors, for ministries of companionship and support, for the young people in this place who open us to new understandings, let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed, who were called by name and now rest from their labors, that their lives serve as witnesses to the goodness of God, let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Again, as we meet after worship to uh, gather together for our annual meeting where we'll be talking about budget, talking about ministry in this next year of 2021, uh, we invite you uh, to come to that meeting, that your voice might be heard and that you might hear a word of thanks as well for the support that was given through this last year and into this new year as we look forward to a new ministry in this place and around the world. And so let us turn to this time of offering. For the offertory this morning, in connection with the theme of healing, I'd like to play There is a Balm in Gilead.
with an offertory response, Light of God. join together in that prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy Our kingdom come, come, thy will be done, on earth as, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing. God, the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the Beloved, fill you, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Ascending song, be thou my vision.
thirsty All who are weak Just come to the fountain Dip your heart in the stream of life Let the pain and the sorrow Be washed away In the waves of His mercy As the deep cries out Come, Lord Jesus, come. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Come, Lord Jesus. Come. Come, Lord Jesus. who are weak just come to the fountain dip your heart in the stream of life let the pain and the sorrow be washed away 